Hey, is the power steering in your classic car all over the place, drifting all over the road and maybe leaking, staining your driveway? We just put a rebuild kit in our 1971 Cutlass Convertible, got it taken care of, got it tightened up, no more leaks, it doesn't drift anymore, firm steering all day long. If you're interested in seeing how we got this done, stay tuned. Welcome to Restoring Christine. We're going to take a little side detour this weekend, just like we did last weekend, cruising the coast. A week-long cruising event on the southern Mississippi beaches is scheduled to start first week of October. We've got about a week and a half left before we leave, and we had to get this 71 Cutlass convertible ready um, to take out there. So last weekend, I changed a TH350 transmission in it. Didn't trust the one it was in it. If you're interested in seeing how we got that done, I'll put a link up here. So... Uh, there's that, and then now what I'm working on is I've got one last little leak with the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this Saginaw steering box. It leaks. It's leaking hy hydraulic fluid. I've got a, a new seal kit that I got from Summit. I've never done this before, but I'm going to watch the YouTube video. <laughs> Tell me if that doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> but I'm going to take the, the gearbox out, and we're going to bring it on a bench, and I'm going to put a new set of seals in it and hopefully get this seal to stop leaking. <laughs> That's what I want to do. So if you're interested in seeing that, then stick with me. So there's my steering box. You got the rag joint, two hydraulic hoses. I believe there's three bolts that bolt it to the frame. And then underneath you got the pitman arm. Pitman arm is underneath here and goes to the drag link. I'm gonna get that off. And there's not a whole lot to it, but you can see where it's leaking. It's leaking on this front cup. And it's hydraulic fluid here, you know. And it always leaves a little drip stain in the driveway, so I want to get that fixed. So I'm just going to remove this, and then the next I'll see is on the bench. Okay, so for those of you who have tuned into my channel and are regulars will know, I am quick to admit that I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm not afraid to try anything. Um, I am I am just a jack-of-all-trades, master of none capable with my hands so I tell you what I watched a few videos of, of these being taken apart and there's nothing to them uh, there's a couple little tricks you need to know from what I can tell um, but when I rebuilt this car when I rebuilt this cutlass this was the original steering box that was in it and I didn't um, I didn't do any any mods to it I didn't I didn't change any seals any gaskets or anything I just basically cleaned it up um, and put it back in and then after a couple of years, it started to develop a leak. It didn't have a leak right away, but I'm guessing, you know, it's a 1971, 50 years worth of uh, age on the seals. It's just time. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling this. I got to get, I think the hardest part for me is going to be getting this, this Pittman arm off. I don't know how long it's been since that's been off. I don't remember if I took that off when I had everything before. I might have had it off. I don't know. It's painted, so I might have had it off. And then the next thing I gotta do is I gotta remember how I made my little trick tool to unscrew this. So um, yeah, and I might I might even lean on my factory assembly manual. I've got a, a, a shop manual. It's not the factory assembly manual. It's a shop manual that, that shows you um, how to service these. So I might have to rely on that. I don't know, but let's uh, let me start diving into it. As I'm taking this apart, I want to point out one thing before we go too far. A lot of people use this to adjust when you got slop in a steering wheel. This is not the place to take up that adjustment. It's over here. I'm going to try to explain that as we take this apart. I have a whole video that's on my top, my my personal channel that was before I started restoring Christine. I'll put a link to that up here, but um, that's on my personal account. Um, but when I think I think when I take this apart, we'll be able to show why what this does versus what this does over here. And you can see where the slop is going to be. The slop is going to be in this adjustment, not this one. So just pay attention to that as we, as we go. Let me continue taking this apart. All right, I got the steering shaft out. This is the part that's got that adjustment that you see sticking out of the top of your steering box. So I got that out. And you can see there's three teeth on it. 
and this is fixed into the shaft. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you where the main adjustment is. The main adjustment is really out here. There's an outer collar and an inner, inner collar. And the outer collar, you just loosen that up. And I just had it loose a second ago. Um, yeah, it, take, it sometimes takes a little bit to get that loose, but you get this loose. And once you get this loose, then you make your adjustment right here. So we're gonna show you that when we're putting it back together. Technically, you need a spanner wrench to go into the two holes to turn this, but I've cheated and I'm using two screwdrivers, but you can see, see how this is threaded? See how that threads in? All right, that's pulling, that's pulling this shaft forward and back. This is where the slop is. It's in this adjustment. So I've got that now completely unthreaded. That's in the housing. That's how this whole thing comes apart. So, but that's where you adjust it. We'll see if we can't understand that better. Maybe that'll be the whole purpose of this, this whole exercise is just to understand that. Let's keep going. So here's something I picked up from one of those videos. There's a little, a little port on the side of this end cap. You just take something sharp and pointy and you push it in. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a big C-clip ring that's starting to come out. And that's what we need to get off in order to uncork this end. I can get behind it. That's what hammers are for. Hammers are for convincing parts to do what you want them to do. You're just going to get them to conform. All right, I got the innards out. Oh my goodness, man. Look at the sludge. I mean, what is this? I don't even know what that is. It looks like leaves. I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's horrible. It is leaves. Or paper or something. Holy cow, what is that? I don't even know. That is insane. What is that? It can't be a leaf. I don't know what it is. But <laughs> it's in my box. Well, let me clean all this up and uh, and we'll start trying to figure out where the seals are and where they go. This is the dirtiest job I think I've done in a long time. <laughs> well, I don't know if we're on our way to an epic fail or not, but I took everything apart as much as I could, cleaned it all up, all the pieces. Um, there's an O-ring on the steering shaft, the input shaft. And then there's one, two, three Teflon rings in here. And the only way to get to those is to disassemble this. And the only way to disassemble that is to pull a snap ring. And I have broken off two snap ring tips trying to get that off. So I can't get that apart. And then this Teflon seal, you need a half inch socket or a half inch driver to get this off. And um, if I can't get all of that off, I'm not gonna bother with this. So I'm gonna leave all the Teflon seals alone. But I did get all the other other seals out one of the drawbacks is that I can't get this this cup rent this cup seal here it looks like this it's a different size which one is it yeah, it's this one I can't get this one out so that's at the top I don't think it was leaking there so hopefully it won't it won't start leaking but um, this is about as good as it can get from for me so let me keep on going and try to put this together all right, I got the, the piston and the worm gear slid in. So the piston slides in from this side, the worm gear from this side. There's a thrust bearing on the end of the, um, the worm gear. And now I've got 22 little BBs. I've got to fish into these two little holes before I put the retainer, uh, the recirculating. It's a split, split um, tube and there's two screws and a, and a retainer that holds it in place and it goes right in that hole. I've never done this before. <laughs> Why somebody do it on the on the web and and um, so yeah, it's it's this is gonna be a trick. But um, that's my goal is to get 22 beads into those holes without losing any. Wish me luck. Well, good morning. It's actually the next day. I worked in that steering box last night until I was blue in the face with frustration trying to get those little ball bearings in. I'm probably not even gonna put that in a video. I had three, four, five, six different takes I was trying to put it in. 
Every time I said, I've got it, no, I don't have it. I've got it now, no, I don't have it. So all that, I tell you what, my misery, your benefit. I'm gonna show you what the heck to expect now. So in getting those ball bearings in, what do, you know, men are accused of not reading directions. Well, I read the directions that they gave me with the kit and these are horrible. So I went back to my 1971 Oldsmobile chassis service manual and sure enough, there it is in great detail. So let me show you. 1971 Oldsmobile chassis service manual. And I printed this out from a disc. And uh, in chapter 9, steering, there is a number of pages devoted to rebuilding this, this steering box. And lo and behold, there it is on one of the, one of the pages, the magic formula. Install 16 balls while rotating the worm counterclockwise, and then the rest you stick into the little split tube that goes in between here and here. Then that allows it to recirculate when the ring gear turns. So that's the trick. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to spare you all the horror from yesterday, and we're just going to go and, and show how it works because I read the instructions. Here we go. All right, so I've already got my worm gear inserted. This is already spun tight to where I think I've got the right amount of slack in it this, in this direction. So now I'm going to insert the, the piston, the recirculating ball piston. That goes in here. It's going to be rotated out of the way so that you can get to these two, these two um, holes. We're going to go ahead and insert the, insert the balls the way the instructions say to do so. Um, so hang on for the ride. Right, so here was the trick you can't let these little balls go away from this hole so they're gonna go around that way and they're gonna spiral around and come back so every now and then they want to drop and they want to come past here but here's the little split clip so the little split clip has a little retainer tab on it and it's got one on the other side too so that keeps the balls in between these two holes or in this circulating track so they're going through here around the the worm gear back into here down and around so you have to have everything constrained in between these two points so now the trick according to the book is to take the rest of the balls and put them in here and then drop that in place so that's liable to be a heck of a trick here to keep them from coming out. Uh, I guess I could use some grease maybe. Put a little dab of grease here in, on the ends. So now that'll keep the balls from rolling out. Put that in. Slip that in the inside of there. Probably need a pair of pliers to do it. Let's see if we can do this. That's in. That's in. All right, just need to put the retainer clip on, which is this, and two screws. Put the cap on. Put the, I need to spin this around to get the teeth aligned and then put the pinion shaft in. All right, let me do that. Let me just show you that I got it working. So I've rotated the piston around and now you can see. all the way bound to this side and keeps rotating that way until I'm at the end of my play over here so that's full travel I'm gonna put it to where it's in the center there's one two three slots so put the center slot in the middle and that ought to allow me to put the uh, pinion gear in so let's see if we can do that is 
so now I've already got this adjusted to where I can bottom this out and it's got play in it so I'm going to take that out last I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up so let's get back to that adjustment and see if it makes sense now so now I've got everything reassembled my pinion gear is in but the pinion gear has got a little bit of of, of slack in it but here this this is tight so this this part is snugged up so that I know without the pinion um, shaft in it I know this is snugged up so this was all tightened and then backed off about a, a sixteenth to an eighth of a turn so that gives it a little bit a little bit a tiny bit of play kind of think about it like you're seating a wheel bearing on the front uh, um, a front rotor so now now this is loose and I don't know if you can you probably can't hear it but I can feel it when I turn this there's a little bit of slop that's left here that needs to dive down and be taken up at the last so that's going to be this part is just to get this in get this down there and that'll that'll uh, take that last little bit out so that's what you adjust with this and that's what I need to do next so let's see I know I've got a, an Allen here and you can adjust this up or down see going that way is getting looser bring it up this way brings it snugger more snug so let's look at one last thing on the adjustment so this is this lash here is setting the depth of the of the pinion shaft so I've already I've got this set tight to where I like it it's it's shoved all the way in but it's not binding and then watch when I when I turn this shaft I don't know if you can see it in this resolution I'm gonna zoom in on it but this is turning like right away as soon as I turn it you zoom in you can see it even better watch it's just gonna go back and forth see there's no no play at all as soon as I mean it's responsive as soon as I turn it I'm turning down here and that's that's rotating so we've got it good to go so the last thing is to put on this lock collar and I just tighten it up and you just take it and you just use it like a lock nut that's all it is and that'll hold this adjustment Okay, one last thing. We're going to put the lock nut on the pinion. On the pinion shaft. Just make sure you put your Allen wrench on that as you're tightening it up. So that when you tighten it up, you don't change the adjustment. Now it's tight, and the box is fully adjusted. The last thing I need to do is put this end cap on. And the sad thing is, this end cap, it's the very last thing I'm doing. This is the one thing that caused me to do the whole job to begin with, was this one O-ring. I had to do all that just to get to this. <laughs> I guess I didn't, but we're better off for doing it this way. Make sure all the seals are good. All, all the seals are good. All right, got the box fully assembled, ready to go back on the car. Put the pitman arm on it's indexed it's got four deep slots so there's only one way you can put it on so now i'm just gonna hope for the best <laughs> that once i get up underneath here that i can get my collar and everything my rag joint hopefully all that lines up in my steering wheel <laughs> my steering wheel won't be crooked i don't know we'll find out all right it's back in got the hoses hooked up got everything hooked up i've already run it checked it for leaks everything is good I've already air purged it so um, it was making some serious racket so anyway let me show you where we at there we are I was talking about that adjustment. Let's see if I can get this. So, on the wheel, 
you see the response. As soon as I touch it, see it? See it move? I mean, it's like right there. So there's no slack at all in the steering. And that's from adjusting it at the end. So not the top, the little top pinion nut. Kill this. All right, well that's gonna do it for this episode. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Um, we're going to take this Cutlass. I got one more weekend before cruising the coast, and then we're going to, um, I got a few more things I'm going to do to it. I just always like to make it as good as I can possibly make it because it just makes the week that much better. So especially, especially when you got so many cruises around and so many people poking and prodding and looking and climbing all over, and you just want to be on your best. You don't want to be broken down. <laughs> that's the best thing. You don't want to be broken down. And you want it to be as clean and as tight as possible. So that's what we're going for. All right, so. If you're liking the videos, please give them a thumbs up. And if you're enjoying the channel, I'd appreciate a subscription. So until next time, take care of yourself. Cheers.